Welcome back everyone. This is Blue Dolphin with Hoplite Security. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the Hack the Box Easy Rated Machine Photobomb. So let's do a high level overview in under 30 seconds. Starting off, we do some enumeration for step one. We use our Kali box to do this. We perform some basic web enumeration and we learn about a subdomain. This is gonna be photobomb.htb for Hack the Box. Thirdly, we do some web directory and script discovery by reviewing the scripts on the page and the source code. From here, we learn that there is a printer directory that prompts for authorization. And there is also an interesting JavaScript file. Looking into the JavaScript file, we do find credentials. We use these credentials to access the web application printer portal. In here, we actually have a photobomb photo gallery. Once we're in here, there's really only one interactive function for us to engage with, and that's gonna be the download photo function. So we enumerate this a little and learn about command injection. And this allows us to get onto the box by popping a bash reverse shell. From here, we do the usual with linps, a little internal enumeration, and we learn about this cleanup.sh script. Now, word on the street is that there are a ton of ways to exploit this machine and take advantage of the script the way that I did it, and I will be showing is I researched the environment variable aspect of this cleanup.sh script because you can execute a command as sudo that has to do with the environment of variable. And in this script, there is also a path hijacking vulnerability. So when we combine the path hijacking vulnerability with the find binary and the sudo environment variable permissions, we are able to execute the cleanup.sh script, which executes a malicious binary that we've created due to path hijacking and we are able to execute a reverse shell as root. That's it. Let's get into the nitty gritty of it. Let's go ahead and jump right into things and start off with our nmap scan against 10.129.222.67. And you can see here we have port 22 and port 80, with eight, which is on HTTP. And we have port 8089, which when I first completed this box was not there. So I don't really know what that's about. But let's go ahead and take a look at the website here as part of the web enumeration phase. We'll open up Firefox and browse over to our intended target here at 10.129.222.67. And the web page just doesn't load. It just kind of goes in cycles here, apparently. Uh, so that's new to me. Let's just try it one more time. All right, it looks like it tries to resolve as photobomb.htb over HTTPS. Now, port 80 normally is used for HTTP like we see here in the MMAP scans, but obviously we need to make some modifications. So we're gonna go ahead and edit our Etsy host file. And you'll see I have my entry there from when I previously completed this machine. So we'll go ahead and add our target here with a slight change of the IP address. There we go. We'll refresh the web page. From here it loads without HTTPS, with HTTP, and you can see it just reads, you know, welcome to your new Photobomb franchise. So it looks like we actually have, a, they literally give us a link here to the forward slash printer directory. And we'll just go ahead and take a quick look at that. And you can see it prompts for credentials. From here, I tried using some basic login credentials, but I didn't really have any success. So I eventually moved on and proceeded to take a look at the website. And you can see that we have an authorization request, or sorry, required, of course. So let's go ahead and take a look and inspect the page. So just the basic view source. And you can see here that we have a script, photobomb, dot js and of course the directory which is where we log in let's go ahead and oh by the way it does say the credentials are in your welcome back so we take a look at the script and you can see here we actually have the credentials in here so it says jameson has written a note that says pre-populate creds for each tech support as they keep forgetting them and emailing me and there's some uh, regular expression here don't really know what that's about to be honest, and over here, there were credentials. In fact, there's a whole URL. So this is an authorization bearer for the request. I think we can literally just copy this. Let's try it out. 
And it looks like, yeah, so it just passes our username and credentials. Awesome. Looking at this web page here, there's not a whole lot. And I initially, I gotta, I gotta be honest, I tried some steganography techniques on all these images, which was, you know, kind of embarrassing. I found nothing. If you did find anything, let me know. I really thought this was the case because the name was Photobomb. So I thought there'd be something malicious in a photo, VBA script, some malware, a binary, nothing. I checked files with strings, bin walk, Z stake, stake hide, uh, the apiary solve, bin walk. I found nothing. Eventually, I started playing around with this download photo to print function. But when you first click it, nothing much happens. You literally just download the file. But if you open up Burp Suite, you see a bit of a different story. So let's take a look here. We're going to open up the terminal, fire open Burp Suite. In fact, you know, I'm just going to create a new tab here to stay organized and call this Burp. All right, with Burp Suite open, we'll browse over in our proxy browser and just pass the uh, first URL. And we'll go ahead and log in. If I recall, it was um, ph0t, no, ph0, capital H0t0. Zero zero, and then the password was bomb b0, capital M, b, exclamation mark. I hope. Let's just send that over to repeater. See if it passes. It looks like it does. So we'll hit forward. Um, maybe it didn't. Let's just try that again. So P capital H, zero T zero and bomb B zero M B exclamation mark. There we go. Okay, so we're in. Now taking a look at the download print button in the bottom here, you have two file types, JPEG, PNG. You have all these different um, options here for the size of the image to download. However, when we click, let me just close some windows here to make this a little less cluttered. There we go. So when we click download photo to print, you can see we get the intercept in Burp Suite and it's passing several commands here. So it's saying, so remember, these are just kind of like URL queries but they're just being passed in the body. So it says photo equals this, file type is this, dimensions are this. So these, this is probably not, so it could be a database in the back end, for example. However, we didn't see any signs of a database. So we send this over to repeater. We wanna see what the response looks like. The response looks like, well, it'll just be a downloaded uh, file, really which I think we should eventually see, but just while we're waiting, we, so initially I tried playing around with all these variables and how I figured out the variable we need to target, looks like it's frozen, but looks like the, uh, the variable we need to target was in fact the file type variable. The way I found this out was just by replacing comments. So I was doing things like this, just saying, hey, you know, dimension equals ID, invalid dimension. Okay, well, let's try, uh, File type equals ID. When we hit send, it says invalid file type. Okay, no problem. And then I came again, you know, photo, um, same thing. So then I started using string terminator. So I did uh, semicolon or colon um, ID, you know, send that to the back end. Invalid dimensions didn't work, okay. Semicolon after file type, PNG, and then we try, you know, ID. And we send this and what's interesting about this request is it actually loads, but it doesn't load ID. There's no, so it just failed to get a copy of this. Okay, but nothing was invalid per se. Nothing was invalid at all, which is interesting. So if we even just try typing, who am I and sending that just as it can't get the file. It doesn't say this isn't working or anything. Um, so here just had failed to generate a copy. That's because we're sending it from repeater, I imagine. Now, if we get rid of this, who am I? And we, you know, try and do string terminator and then say ID after the photo name, source photo doesn't exist. So that that's a very unique error 
that we're getting, we can kind of test this out by going over to the proxy tab and going semicolon ID. Just seeing what comes back. Well, nothing's going to come back. Do we get the file? No, but that's odd. I, when I first did this, the page wasn't airing out, but that's fine for now. We will just select a different image um, and try PNG. Let's see. So we'll turn intercept on. We'll say download photo to print. Send this over to repeater where we'll do the file type equals PNG, semicolon or string terminator ID. Okay, so it says fail to generate a copy. All right, now what we'll do from here is I started playing around with different commands and it wasn't until I started playing around with the ping command that I started to see a different response. So if we go ping and we put our IP address in, which is 10.10.15.2. We have to URL encode this. We can just copy this new control U. It's really just going to add a space is all. What we'll do now is we'll set up a listener to listen for this. So we'll open up a new tab and we'll call this TCP dump. And we're just going to do TCP dump dash I for interface, ton zero. And then we want to only listen for ICMP requests. We need to run this as sudo. I hope, I hope that's all that's going on here. Yep. Okay. So we'll go ahead and send this ping request. It takes some time there, but we should see the pings coming through to our local host. Yep, and there they are. So this is how we know we have command injection. From here, we wanna escalate this to a reverse shell, of course. So what we'll do now is we'll spin up a listener called netcat-nlvp over port 63, and we're gonna change this to listener, just the tab name to stay organized. Now we're going to go over to our internet browser here. We're going to go to payload all things, payload all things. We're just going to look for bash reverse shells. And I had to try several until they started working. So if you look under here, we'll just look for, oh, let's go straight to the reverse shell cheat sheet and we'll go bash TCP. Oh, sorry, no, it, it was the bash TCP reverse shell that worked. I think it was, I think it was the reverse shell later in the, the for root that I was having some issues with. Okay, jumping over here, let's add a reverse shell in. Just like that. Sorry, actually, what I think it was is that the bash reverse shell doesn't work and we have to use a Python shell, if I recall. Let's just, yeah, it was Python and then I had an issue where I had to make it a Python 3 call. So let's just do this anyway for the sake of doing it. So 10, 10, 15.2, um, will URL encode this and it's not gonna work. And I spent a, a ton of time trying to figure this out. So if we send this off and our, our listener is just not gonna catch, right? We'll take a look here. We'll see there's nothing going on, fair enough. So after trying all the bash shells, I eventually started trying Python shells and it was one of these ones. I don't remember which one. I think it was the IPv4 no space that finally worked. And you know, sometimes you just gotta keep trying reverse shells until they work. Unfortunately, there's no uh, finesse to it. You just gotta, if you gotta try four or five, you gotta try four or five and do your due diligence. So let's go ahead and paste this payload in here. We shall put our listening port in, which is 6363. And of course, we want to target our computer, which is 10.10.15.2. We will URL encode all of this. And I believe here the issue was just that. Hang on, I don't like that white space, so I guess we need it. Uh, the issue is that it's executing in Python. So after messing around for a while, I had to change it to Python 3. So if we send this, I believe it won't work. Let's see. Yeah, it's not gonna work. So what we do is we'll cancel that. We'll just add a three and see if this works. Otherwise, if it doesn't, we'll try the next uh, reverse shell. 
And there it is, it takes some time, but it eventually worked. And there you go, you can see we have, we are user wizard and our a file is uh, it's in the home directory, I believe. So let's go down a directory and I think it's, yeah, so user.txt right there. All right, so the next stage of this engagement is we're gonna use linpiece to help us enumerate what's on the box. But first we're gonna start off by typing sudo dash L and we're gonna find out that we can actually as user wizard, run the following command on photobomb. I mean, this part was pretty hard. This part took me a considerable amount of time. Um, and I'll just get into that. But for now, we don't need burp suite. So we maybe we will just in case we lose our shell. But we're going to open up a, another browser and just call this Python serve, or I'll call it Python HTTP. And in this case, we're just going to serve up linpeas and ps, or linpeas, we don't need pspy. So we'll spin up our server here. Now we'll go ahead and grab our limp script by doing so we get http 10.10.15.2 10 or 40,000 dot sh we'll change permission on our limp script so now we can run it and now we'll go ahead and fire off the script here and we'll just wait for this to finish all right looks like limp is finished here so we're going to go ahead and look through it and as we scroll through it, we are eventually going to find our target. And uh, again, there apparently were several ways to exploit um, the server and get root and probably user as well. Uh, please comment down below if you did it differently. I'd love to know how. One thing we see is photobomb log here, which is kind of interesting. But as we continue to scroll, we will actually find a script. It's, uh, it's somewhere here. Let's see, we have Uncommon password files, keyring files, ham auth. Might have actually accidentally skipped over, but we'll keep going. Looks like uh, private SSH key was found for image magic. That's interesting. Oh, cool. Look at that. You can actually see here that password for photobomb was stored in .ht passwords. You can see photo here, and then it was hashed here, which is kind of cool. So, of course, when you log into a website like this, your password is taken hash and then compared against the hash against .ht password. Now, what else do we have here? So, okay, here's what's, this, uh, is this it? No, this is not it. I think we're getting closer though. We're looking for a uh, SSH script. There's a lot of red, which is, you know, probably why it can be exploited in so many ways. There's photobomb SH here, but that again is just for the website. We can take a look at that. What I'm really looking for is the opt cleanup.sh script, which when you stare at this for a while, you will find it. I'm just going to run linpeas again here and do, we're just going to grep for it. It's going to be a cleanup. Dot sh. I think I clearly skimmed over it. All right, you know what? Limp is gonna. Okay, it's gonna take forever. It doesn't matter because we already know the location. It was in the uh, sudo dash l. It just referenced it, and so that's fine. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump over there. So if we do sudo dash l again, we can see it's opt cleanup. So we'll just jump back to the base directory, and we will cat cleanup dot sh. And this is where things got a little difficult for me. I'm looking at this script and it has an if statement for some log files, which if they're, you know, true, then we can see that there is, um, the cat command is called to take the files in photobomb.log and put them in log.ol. And then a, there's a truncate command. And I don't know how to exploit that. I think some people did. Uh, I don't know how, please comment down below if you did, I'd love to know. But what I kind of noticed was that we had down here, protect the priceless originals. And that's kind of seemed like a hint. Why was there a comment like that, right? So I see the, the find of binary. And if we know that there's this so-called secure path up here, that's weird it's named secure, um, we could potentially exploit this, but I don't see any uncoded paths here. There's none, everything is, everything's tight. There's nothing uncoded that we can kind of hijack However, when we look at the root command set environment, no password needed, opt cleanup, what this is saying is we can set an environment variable 
and run off cleanup.sh in the same line. At least that's how I interpret it after staring at it and meditating on it for quite some time. We can't just run sudo opt cleanup. We can't just set an environment variable. We have to run the full extent of the command. So from here, if we do that, we can actually set our environment variable to our current working directory where we have our malicious version of find, which will run before it goes through the secure path. Because we'll always check our local or uh, working directory first if we add that as an environment variable. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing we'll want to do is we want to create a malicious find binary. So I'm just thinking here. So we'll do this. We Now, we don't have access to any of the paths here. So when I originally did this, I went through every path here and checked permissions. I didn't have permissions to create a binary in any of them. So what we'll do is we'll jump over into our home directory, just like this. Great, and we will go echo, uh, double colon, and we'll just do, so we can do reverse shell, um, but I just did uh, root because, I don't know, I just did. Root dot root dot text and close quotes, and then add this to a uh, find, but don't specify if it's like a binary or a text file or what, and then there's a weird looking error underneath the cat and root. I'm wondering if that's because that's a double space. Let me just check. No, it's not. So let's do that again. Root and root dot text. Close with quotes into a binary called find. Now what we'll do is we'll change permissions on this and we'll blast them away. 777 on find. So now it's tricky. Now we have to find a way to run sudo to set our environment variable to our working directory. So we can execute find from here. How I originally found this was, uh, I actually didn't find it easy. I've set environment variables before, but I, you know, again, this is new and I wasn't totally sure if I was on the right track or not, but I was kind of looking around just saying Linux, how to set uh, environment variable path, current directory. And after combing around and looking around, we start to learn that indeed, we are looking for, just like the sudo dash L shows, we do sudo dash L again, set env, so set of course environment variable, we have to call the path variable. And if we wanna set it to our present working direct directory, we can do that. And we can have a script in there waiting for us. And if you look around on a couple links, you'll eventually it becomes very apparent that this is what you're supposed to do. We also note that it says here, you should note that having your present working directory in your path is a potential security risk. So what we can do now is we can say, what is the Linux path variable? You know, we see here that it's uh, an environment variable containing an ordered list of paths that Linux will search for an executable running command. All right, so with that information, we know that we want to use use our pseudo permissions to set an environment variable. And we want to set the specific one, we want it to be the path of our current working directory so we can execute find. Now I had to experiment around uh, quite a bit and just look around online, but I eventually was able to get it to work by just doing pseudo path equals. I think I just found this on Stack Overflow. Um, print working directory semicolon a dollar sign path and then we do now we call opt cleanup dot sh all in one line and I'm just thinking here just thinking that didn't work okay let's see here just make sure my files are indeed here oh, the find binary is definitely there let's just check What's in find? I'm wondering if, and it definitely just says cat root root dot text permissions are definitely uh, are they correct? Yes, they are correct. All right, let's just try this again here. I'm thinking maybe you know I just did something wrong. Oh, there we go. Okay, there it is, and there is the root flag. I guess I had just typed it out wrong and actually did single quotes where I was supposed to do text, not single quotes. Uh, and again, that was something that I struggled with, but thanks to Stack Overflow, I eventually found this out and 
uh, just talking around in Discord. I had to ask a couple times in Discord, hey, I'm on the right path. You know, I think I'm uh, going about this in the right way where I'm trying to combine the, uh, you know, cleanup.sh script, calling the find binary and setting that path variable. And um, just because, you know, I'm no, I'm no guru. I'm always learning. Uh, and I really enjoyed this box. I hope you do as well. And I'll see everyone in the next video.